Hey there, hackers! Welcome to Tacit Sanctuary. Today, I will show you some data processing tricks. This will enable us to organize our program inputs in a structure which is easier to work with in an array language such as Viva. With this knowledge, you will be able to pass the initial hurdle of any of the advent of code challenges, which is about reading data from a text file. In my last video, I was exploring how to split a string in two parts, but more often we have to do the split along some separator character, but at unknown positions and even to multiple parts. This is also how CSV files work. Let's consider a single line, a sentence that needs to be broken to words. First, I make a copy of the string and mark each character that is a white space. By comparing each character to the space, I am creating a Boolean mask of ones and zeros. So, these are my separators. Now for the partition function, what I really need is a mask of all non-separator characters. So those that must be captured. So I just use not equal for my mask. And the last thing I need is a function which is applied to each group that is isolated during partitioning. Because each word can have a different length, this time I will use the box function. To summarize this section, according to the docs, partition is a monadic modifier that takes two arguments. So technically, it needs three things to work. First, a function that controls what to do with each partition, then a mask array, and finally the data array. As another example, my string can have numbers separated by comma. I only need to make some small adjustments. I change the separator character, and I will use the parse function to convert each group to an actual number. That way, my array will contain nice numeric data. Here's a different example. In this case, each group has the exact same shape of two characters. If I can be sure that this is the case, I can also use the identity function for partitioning. This retains the original structure of each group. My result is now a regular array with five rows and two columns. I can use the shape function to get this information, if the data is slightly larger and not so trivial to see. Let's practice our partitioning skills with another exercise puzzle, the acronym. In this task, I have to combine the first letter of each word in a phrase. First, I will isolate each word by marking every character that can be a word separator. For now, I will consider white space and the dash character too, but we could add underscore or add quotation marks if needed. I put all the separators in a string, and using the member glyph, I test every character of my phrase for membership. For this, I need to flip my arguments. No, I have the boolean array that marks the positions of separators. I actually need the opposite to mark the non-separators, so I use negate. And finally, I can partition the data applying the first function on each segment to get the first letter. Viva can merge the single letters to a string without any problems, so I don't even have to use any boxing here. And to put the sherry on top, I convert all letters to uppercase with the absolute function. Now, let's get down to real business. Say we have a list of fairy tale characters, along with their completely made up cuteness ranking. In Viva, we can use a row string to represent multi line data, where each line begins with a dollar sign and a white space. 
as you can see, the data is interpreted as a single string. You can notice the line break character as backslash n. First, let's break up the data along the lines. We can practice the already proven partition function. Remember, we want to put a mask on the characters that we want to keep. So, not equal to the end line will do the trick. Then we partition box to capture each line separately. Now we have an array of two elements, but what we probably really want is a table or matrix, so we can better manage the details. In Viva terms, this would be a 2D array. So what we can do is replace the box function with something more complicated. Here inside the parentheses we can define how to process each row. And actually we want to partition them again, but this time separated by the comma. As we can already do this fluently, I will just type the whole thing, partition box not equal comma and duplicate. Ok, now I will show you something amazing. The real data will often come in files, and it's not great if I have to manually format it as Viva row string and copy to the code. Of course, I could also install Viva on the computer and use the file processing commands. But one really cool feature of the Viva pad on the website is that I can drag in files from the outside. I think it works only if I start with a blank pad, so I will just save this function for later. Here is a CSV file with slightly bigger set of data, with my own arbitrary scores of cuteness. Once I delete the code, I can just drag the file into the editor and it will be processed for me. By default, it is doing file read all to bytes. So it's giving me an array of numbers, but I can change it to file read all to string. And here I have the data as text, just like my multi-line row string. Now I can repeat the usual stunt with partitioning to get a nice table. This is obviously not as sophisticated as a data frame in Python but I can pull a few tricks that will let me take advantage of Viva arrays. First, I am going to transpose the array to have the labels and the data in two separate rows. I can pull this apart to two separate pieces on the value stack. How? The couple function is able to combine two things into rows of an array. And I want to do the opposite here, so I can simply write uncouple and whoosh, now the labels and the data are separate. By the way, if there are more than two items in the array and you want to put them all to the stack, there is a more generalized way of using an array with deep ID. But keep in mind that the stack is not really meant to hold a large number of individual values. That's what the arrays are for. Now I am okay with the names but the scores are still in a boxed array of strings. I want to convert them to numbers. However, currently they are the second thing on the stack. So I can use the dip modifier to go one value deeper down the stack and apply the parse function there. It then pervasively converts each string to a number. Finally, I can assign each of the series to a name, something like a variable, but they are not truly changing. We have already seen how function declaration works, but if I do not specify any value, then the top of the stack will be consumed. We always use capitals for the first letter to avoid clashes with built-in functions. Now I can get back the names and scores anytime and use them in other parts of my code. Now remember how we did the sorting. Duplicate the array, use the rise function to determine the ascending indices and finally select. There we have the sorted names. But what if we want to sort by something else? Right now we have the names and the scores in their original order of appearance in both arrays. So the indices are matching. 
if I use fall underscores. I get the appropriate indices in descending order. And selecting these same indices from the names array, I have sorted the names by decreasing cuteness score. If I want to get only the cutest one, I can use first. And the interpreter even gave me a tip this time how to improve my code, which is very useful. There, this looks better. I could also get the top three using the take function. Keeping in mind that indices in my two arrays are matching, I can use this to implement a lookup. For example, if I want to see the score of one individual, let's say Shrek. First, I need to find his index in the names array. The number 6 is actually wrong. It is out of bounds because the data only has 6 elements, therefore index 6 does not exist. And this is because the index of function tried to find each character in the array of boxed names. To fix this, I just have to box the actual name. Then it will be able to identify the index as 1. Finally, I just need to pick this index from the scores array and I have a whopping cuteness of 2. Now my functions and arguments are all over the place. So I can refactor this a little and I can turn it into a function that is supposed to take a name and return a score. All I need to do is rearrange the arguments a little by flipping in the right places. So the input comes at the end of the line. It still works then I can assign it to a function and invoke it with other fairy tale figures too. You may have noticed that the data we have been dealing with just now is very similar to an associative array or dictionary or hash map, however you want to call it. In Viva, this type of data structure is, well, still under construction. There are some experimental features around it. As Viva has not yet reached this final stage of maturity, such features are quite common and they get added and removed, so here is the disclaimer that this might be subject to change in the future. We do not even have dedicated glyphs for these functions, but let's try anyway what we have at the moment. We can create the hash map from the set of keys and values using the map function. So I am reverting this code up to the point where we had the two arrays cleansed on the stack. Now as I said, as a safety measure I must add the experimental tag in the command. But here we go, the map has been created, the small arrows indicate the association. I can now store all this data in a single queued variable. Lookup is very simple with the get function and we don't even need to use boxing. I can also add new keys with insert. Now keep in mind that modifications will only affect what is on the stack. When I saved the initial data to a map, it is technically immutable and constant. This is important to remember when we assign names for future use. Again, I revert back to our initial file. If I am already familiar with the structure of the data, it might be possible to partition it in a single step. I could say that I want to split the values by either new line or comma right away and box the groups. Same pattern as before, partition box and use the member function to create a mask of all non-separators. Now I have the names and scores all intermixed, but I already know that there are two columns in this data set. So I can reshape all the values into a 2D matrix, specifying an unknown number of rows with infinity and two columns. And I got the same structure as before. Now maybe I don't even need all the data, only some specific columns. For example, I am only interested in the names. How can I discard the rest? 
Again, I can transpose the matrix and pick any of the rows I want. In this case, pick 0 gives me all the names. Be aware that pick decreases the dimensionality of the array. It used to be rank 2, but now it's only rank 1. If I want to take multiple rows after transposing, then I can use select and specify an array which indices I want. I can even change the sequence of the rows, for example select 1 and 0 gives me the same two rows but in different order. Now I still have my two dimensions, so I can transpose back the data if needed. In this scenario, namely a 2D array, transpose is the same as untranspose, as we are just flipping the two axes back and forth. We can observe a pattern here. Do function x to the array, then do function y, then undo function x. This is the perfect use case for the under modifier, so I can refactor this code like so. Under transpose select. The under function would deserve a separate video, so I will just say that this is one of the most mind-blowing amazing features of Viva. Finally, I want to mention that we can also use regex in Viva. With the same syntax as Rust, because regex parsing is just delegated to the Rust libraries. So we can do just about anything with regular expressions if we really want to. It would be too much to add the regex tutorial here, so I will just throw in a single example. I have the regex function here, although it does not have a dedicated glyph. Let's say I want to capture all the numbers from the file. I can do that easily by putting the correct pattern in a string. Now I still have a 2D array as a result, but I can flatten it with D shape. And then use the parse function to convert the data to numbers. It looks very simple indeed. Just to round it up with a small exercise, let's calculate the average cuteness. How do we get the arithmetic mean? Divide the sum of values by the count of values. The sum is expressed by reduce add. And the count has its own length function. I can do both operations at the same time using a fork. And finally, I apply the division. There we have the average just using five glyphs. Beautiful, easy, compact, readable, tacit programming at its best. Thank you for sticking around. I hope this was useful to get some ideas how to approach some data parsing and data processing problems at large. If you enjoy this content, then please give this channel some encouragement and share with me your opinion in the comments. I will make more videos if you have any specific requests about certain topics, I promise I will try to prioritize those. See you next time!